I think Hamilton stopped. He did, but apparently he and Sterling only took on two tires. Give me that back. Because they beat everybody out so bad. It was no contest. Yeah, I saw the four car coming down pit road. Yep. Guys, that padding for John Andretti serves two purposes. Remember, it was about, little, about four weeks ago that he broke some ribs and broke his scapula, so they had made a pad for, to be able to protect his shoulder. If he were to bob around on that seat at all and be banging on that scapula, the pain would be pretty uncomfortable. So they had to have that padding to fill the seat, but also to help pad that scapula and ribs on that side that he had broken. I guess it was back uh, right before Charlotte. The Winston, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the Winston. You're right, BP. We think here that the 4 and the 40 only took on two tires. If we could get a confirmation on that, it would be helpful. Okay. Not away, Mikey. Oh, Waited to him. him. You so. ought to call these drivers every weekend when you pick them, to, so they might might as well not even show up for the race. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN's coverage of the St. Mark Reagan 350 from Sears Point Raceway in Sonoma, California, being brought to you by Daytona USA, the official attraction of NASCAR. By the Y-Track Pontiac Grand Prix, proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. And by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. 71 laps complete here at Sears Point. As the Pennzoil Copter Cam has a view of the field under our fourth caution of the day. Kenny Wallace. Leading Mike Skinner, Ward Burton is up in third position, followed by Sterling Marlin and Bobby Hamilton, who has had a good run here today. Bobby Hamilton made the pit stop just a moment ago and put fuel on in his car. He did not change time. Well, Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Gum Out at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, is from the Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. The Rockies against the Diamondbacks. That series is at 1-1, the rubber match tonight. Coverage begins with baseball tonight, presented by Pep Boys at 7.30 Eastern. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of GoNetwork, Go.com. Before we go green, we'll sneak in another break and be back in just a moment with more from Sears Point. Somebody dropped a drum. Hey guys, a uh, uh, couple of things out here. The uh, the 40 Ned took on only left side tires. Marlin took on left side tires. He made the call himself from inside the car. The 24 took on four tires, and Rusty Wallace has told Robin they're going to be very. They think they're going to be very very close on fuel. In fact, Rusty's putting the car in neutral and letting it coast down through the S's to try to save gas. Very hmm. close on the two for, for fuel. Hmm. Thanks, Jerry. You're welcome, guys. You can shut my mic. Uh, he has uh, been a top runner all day, so I expect him to move up there very, very I'm sorry? Inbound. Going to show that feel somewhere? Okay. Okay. Bob Jeff Gordon, who of course has been up the front and is looking so desperately for this win. ESPN, proud to be here in Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California. Here's how they're running at the end of 72 laps. We're under caution. Kenny Wallace is leading for the first time in the year 2000 in the NASCAR Winston Cup race. Now, those top three did not stop. Kenny Wallace, Mike Skinner, and Ward Burton. Sterling Marlin took on left side tires only. Bobby Hamilton, as Benny reported, only took on fuel. Everybody else from there on down took on four tires. Here is 16 through 30, and we've got 28 on the lead lap. And 
John Andretti in the 20 car replacing Tony Stewart, obviously the last car. Steve Park, who had the power steering problem, that problem has been fixed. Now he's back in 26, but we see Jeff, saw Jeff Burton get his lap back. He's on the lead lap in 23rd spot. And the remainder of the field now with just two officially out of the race, Boris Sett and Andretti. Both of those drivers are still in the race as relief drivers. Boris Sett for Robert Presley and Andretti for Tony Stewart. John? One thing I've noticed watching Kenny Wallace make his way around the track all afternoon is fuel overflowing, coming out the uh, overflow every lap. And as a result of that, he's lost a lot of fuel out on the racetrack. So they're only picking up about 18 gallons. That means he can only go 25 to 27 laps. So he couldn't make it to the end. So that's the reason they decided to stay out until they got to that 25 lap window before they would make their pit stop to go to the end of the race. Here we go, the greed is about to come out, and the St. Mark Cragen 350 back under race condition. Hey, we have a situation here with some tires, with cars with old tires on them. Some with four, there's Jake Gordon making move already on the fourth car, which didn't take on any tires. is looking good up there in third spot, and contact between Marlin and Compton. Stacy gets off course momentarily, creates a real bottleneck behind him, but keeps his momentum. And Mark Martin, and here's his Jeff Gordon in the 40 car, almost make contact. Gordon drives on the inside of Sterling Marlin, takes that spot away. Here comes Mark Martin on the inside of four. Now remember, Sterling Marlin only took two tires. He took left side tires. And Rusty, and Rusty, Rusty Wallace, Wallace around he goes. Rusty was concerned about being able to go the rest of the way on fuel. And now, just look at the positions mm. this spin has cost him. Let's take a look at it once again. It was up in turn number seven. He comes down the hill. He gets on the inside of Mark Martin, goes up and gets in the inside of four. I think he tried to board spinning Bobby Hamilton out when he did, basically spun, spun himself out. Bucky hit the curbing with his inside tire, the right side tires, and that shifted the weight on it and round he went. And he threw him over into the side of the four car. There he is. Buster Wallace now back to the 28th position, the last car on the lead lap. He well, Ned, you pointed out in the, in the very beginning of the show that things can happen in... Ooh, Mike Skinner almost <laughs> yeah. lost it. Uh, you said that uh, things can happen even as late as the last lap, and you're running in the lead lap up front amongst the leaders, and all of a sudden you're back as the best car on the lead lap. There's a lot of positions because there are still 28 cars on the lead lap, and, man, you have to be so careful. And boy, we remember what happened to Ward Burton last year. It occurred, it occurred right here in front of our broadcast position when he and Rudd and Wallace all got together, ruining their days. Here's the battle for a second now between Skinner and Ward Burton. Now, we know that they will have to make another pit stop. There are many that make this last pit stop up during the caution that say they can go the rest of the way as far as fuel is concerned. But Ward Burton running in third, trying to get second away from Mike Skinner. He will have to make another pit stop. Lord Burton is driving a backup car. He's in qualifying here on Friday afternoon, crashed up in the S's and, and turned the car over, had to go to backup. Had a good, really good race car. Here's that qualifying lap Friday afternoon. Gets that left rear in the dirt. The Caterpillar car goes around, backs him fence, and watch this, climbs that fence, and does a slow roll over, lands on its wheels, and Ward got out through his helmet and said, hmm. I made a mistake. <laughs> well, he started in 37th position. He got the first provisional spot, now running in third place. By the way, that qualifying crash was right at the same position where he had the encounter with Rudd and Wallace last year during the race. Bill is with Scott Pruitt, who's out of the event. Scott, high hopes, a disappointing finish. What happened? Well, Tony and I were going side by side up into, into one. We just got together a little bit. Got through there, and then I took a big shot from behind, turned me around. I'm not sure really who hit me. Got going again from that, came down in the back, went to that little dog lay behind the Winston Tower. Car wouldn't turn. I mean, wouldn't stop, wouldn't turn. I think something broke in the front from that shot. Went in the fence, took a pretty good 
shot in the throat. So disappointing for Ty, the whole team. You know, we were running real strong and thought we had a real good chance to finish top five. See you at Daytona. Thank you. Well, evidently Skinner could not make it the rest of the way on fuel, so he decides to bring that Lowe's home improvement Chevrolet in, get fuel and four tires. Slip around a little bit out there, Skinner Ross. Here's a good battle going on back there between the three points leaders. Dale Earnhardt in 10th, Dale Garrett in 11th, and Bobby Labotti in the 12th position. Kyle Petty back there in 14th. Now, going up the hill just a moment ago on this same lap that they're on right now, let's watch what happened going up that turn. And coming up on Stacy Compton. There's Joe Nemechek in car number 33. And... There's some contact made somewhere because I saw a lot of smoke. There it is. Oh, yeah. Earnhardt really got pinched in there for a moment, but fortunately those behind him backed off and gave him a little bit of running room, so keeps going. Joe Nemechek is having a good race. He's in the ninth position, although he is under fire from Dale Earnhardt. And Dale Jarrett, the uh, defending Winston Cup champion, is very close to a top ten position here. Currently running in the 11th spot. He started 18th, dropped back to 25th on lap number 15, but has moved up to the 11th spot, and Kyle Petty is trying to get around the 9 car of Stacey Compton. Mike Bliss back there in the 27th car, the Riley car, is a good run today for Bliss. Yep. And both of those cars passed Bobby Labotti in the last lap. Bobby was, as we saw there a moment ago, and it might have been during that little skirmish up there that Bobby lost those positions. Oh, Michael Walter gets on the curb up there, leaps in the air, and keeps the nation's rent the Chevrolet going. Well, Michael Waltrip is on the lead lap in 15th spot. Right behind him is Johnny Benson, Jerry Nadeau, Dale Earnhardt Jr. also on the lead lap. They're all chasing the 55, driven by Kenny Wallace, who's in the lead here with 77 laps completed. Go Kenny Wallace. <laughs> yes, sir. Betsy Ross, huh? You bringing them men out all making those plans <laughs> She is from the town that you went through the other day, Connorsville. Is she? Yes, she is. I wish I'd have known that. Though. Yep. Betsy um, worked at the station in Indianapolis and uh, Channel 13. Yeah, we never saw each other then, but uh, since we've been working for ESPN, we've communicated with each other. For second place. Not anymore. Wallace leads the St. Mark Creighton 350 NASCAR Winston Cup race at Sears Point, but Jeff Gordon has taken second position away from Ward Burton and now begins to close in on Kenny Wallace, whose best road course result was ninth, Watkins Glen, back in 1993. His best finish here at Sears Point was last year. He finished 14th, talking about the leader, Kenny Wallace. Bob McElroy that he was the only driver who had run in all the races this year who had not led a lap coming into today's race. That is correct, yes. 
So now he's taking care of that. Yep. yep. The only driver who had started all races this year. Bobby Gordon's gotten by Bobby Hamilton, moved into the seventh position. Man, I got a sneaky feeling some of these guys will not be able to make it the rest of the way on fuel. You mean even some of those who stopped? Yeah. I, I, I think you, you, there'll be a lot of them be sweating down near the end if the thing goes uh, green the rest of the way. Jeff Gordon is closing in slowly but surely on Kenny Wallace. Our on track interval shows you that Kenny Wallace runs pretty consistent laps. 71. One to 70, 74 one to 74 three but look at jeff gordon all the laps three laps 73.9 and one lap where he passed the car 74.2 slowly slowly just a couple of tenths of a second per lap closing in on kenny walks so those yeah. fresher tires is one thing to allow him to do that and he's now 2.8 seconds behind wallace so he's Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd. As we see the cars come up the hill, we're going to focus on the 99 of Jeff Burton. He got his lap back recently. He's now up to 21st position. And right behind him is Steve Park in the Penzoil car and the 20 car driven by John Andretti. Front is in the lead lap. He's in the 20th position. And there we see the battle. Yep. Jerry, how's Tony Stewart feeling? Well, Bob, when he got out of the car, he wasn't doing very well at all. He was very lightheaded, and they were helping him out of the pit area as quickly as possible to the infill hospital. Now, he's in the infill hospital, or has been there for quite a while, getting IV fluids, uh, getting some other hydration. And the report is that he is now awake and feeling much, much better uh, after that intestinal flu and heat got to him, but doing much, much better. Would love to be in the race car, but the report for Tony Stewart is uh, the, the intestinal flu may have gotten him down, but the fluids have helped tremendously. And John Andretti just drove his car into the 22nd position as he passed C. Park. Well, for third place, shaping up here between the 22 of Ward Burton, the cat car, Sterling Marlin. Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd. By the way, while we're focused here on Mark Martin, I gotta thank the people at Big Brothers and Big Sisters of America. They have elected me as their media person of the year. Congratulations. Because of the uh, the mentions that we have done, you know, Valvoline donates a lot of money to Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Yeah, that's a fine program. Well, that's terrific. Good for you. Mark Martin is in the fifth position, about five seconds behind the leader of the race. Now the interval between the first place, Kenny Wallace and Jeff Gordon is about one and a half seconds at Sears Point. in Washington, D.C., and unfortunately, I can't be there. They're going to officially give it to me at the Brickyard 400, so if you would like to attend, I would be appreciative in some kind of a ceremony.
we got to stop this. Jeremy going to lap down. The coastline north of San Francisco, about 40 miles. It's not too far inland that we are today at Sears Point Raceway in Sonoma, California. This is one of the most beautiful areas of the United States. And here on the road course at Sonoma, we got a good battle shaping up as the Pennzoil Copter Cam will show you now how close Jeff Gordon is to the leader, Kenny Wallace. He just gradually cut that lead down, just a few tenths of a second each lap. And now it's just a matter of a few car lengths. Well, Jerry, uh, Jeff Gordon is catching up quickly to Kenny. But Bob, he's doing it with a very, very calculating approach. He has been told when he left pit road a little bit ago not to swerve the car for rocking the gas out. He's been told to be very, very careful on the throttle. Why? Because he's been told that he is extremely close on fuel. Jeff Gordon and tell him that he may be able to make it. He makes a move now to take the lead away from Kenny Wallace. They are door by door coming out of turn 11, and Gordon will have the advantage on the left-hander up to turn one. Remember, Kenny Wallace has yet to pin. We'll have to come in in about four or five laps. But getting back to Jeff Gordon, he has been told that they are very close on view. In fact, they said if he makes the check flag, he probably will not make it back around for the next lap. Wow. Well, we'll certainly keep an eye on that. Kenny Wallace led 16 laps, has given it up here on lap number 87. And a whole bunch of activity back of him. Kenny Mayfield, the 12 car, the mobile car, has gone a lap down. Uh, the car is certainly not up to speed. I would guess maybe lost a gear in the transmission or something. Is Robbie Gordon back there still working on Ricky Rudd. The battle for the sixth position. And Jerry talked about how close it might be for Jeff Gordon. I expect there are a lot of other cars out there that it's going to be very close to those last few laps. They'll be sweating it if this thing goes green the rest of the way. And when Jeff crosses the line, we'll have 25 laps to go. Doc. Well, Ned, you're exactly right. You consider that Jeff Gordon normally gets pretty good gas mileage, so if he's going to be very close, how about the guys that haven't gotten nearly as good a gas mileage as the 24 car has, like the 6 car? They are really sweating bullets. And the 2 car at the car number 55. Kenny Wallace makes what should be his final pit stop, headed down to you, John Kernan. And Kenny, one, two pit stalls away, swings the car in. It'll be a four-tire change with no chassis adjustments. Their only hope now is that everybody else out there has to stop again. But as you guys have been pointing out, that could happen, maybe not. It's going to be close. But the left side's now going on. It's full of fuel. They look inside, and you can see the fuel pouring out, the overflow. And that's something to keep an eye on because that's been the problem that has cost them all afternoon long. They've lost about four gallons out of the tank uh, out there on the racetrack from going out the open. You know what would be the best thing to happen to him right now? Oh, yeah, the car. oh yeah, because all these other cars would drive in and put on yeah. fresh tires and you'd have them and he'd be right out front again. Oh, look at all that fuel. Look at that fuel come out. Man, oh, man. He does lose a lot of that fuel. Man. There is supposed to be a little flapper valve in the vent that keeps that fuel in there, but obviously it's not working properly on Kenny Walsh's car. Well, Jeff Gordon has the lead over Ward Burton, Sterling Marlin, Mark Martin, Ricky Rudd, and Robbie Gordon. We have had seven leaders today and 10 lead changes. Sterling Marlin has led the lap, most laps so far, 25. Jeff has been out front for 19. Kenny Wallace led 16, Rusty 11, Pruitt 10, Robbie Gordon 5, and John Andretti was out front in two laps. Kenny Irwin and Steve Park spinning in turn number 11. I don't think this is going to be the caution that would benefit Kenny Wallace. Well, if he can get, yeah, he finally did get it uh, fired. Kenny Irwin did. And we understand that Jeremy Mayfield, who we saw got left not too long ago, made a pit stop, and then he, here's a replay, but anyway, Jeremy Mayfield got a penalty as we watch this. See. Steve Park got in the corner and just locked up the right front tire trying to slow down. And when he locked up the tires, the car won't turn. You folks, when you have the brakes on, the car will not turn. He gets in the corner and when the brakes locked up, he just slid right over in the side of Kenny Irwin and both the cars went around. And we hear that Rusty Wallace has thoughts of pitting, right, Jerry? 
Exactly, Bob, for a couple of reasons. They lost the track position with that uh, spin up there a little bit ago in turn seven, plus the fact they are so, so very close on fuel. They figured they'd go ahead and get him in, put gas in the car, put four tires on it, get him back out in front of the leaders. If there is a caution flag, then they're sitting with Golden. If there's not, well, he just drives it to the finish line and hope some other guys run out of gas and he can gain some spots. I think he can afford to take a chance. Rusty will pit this time by. I think that's good strategy. So do I. I think that's a really good strategy right now because he's back in about 20th position, 21st position. He might as well go in and take a chance. So Rusty is in the pit box, Jerry. This could be a strategy move, as you guys said, that could possibly win him a race. All he needs is a caution flag. Deliberate pit stop for Rusty Wallace. Billy Wilburn, left front tire coming off. Earl Barbin, one big pound with that jack in the car goes in the air. Left side tire zone. Great pit stop. They got full of fuel. Great stop for the Miller Light crew. Rusty back down and away. Look how many times we've seen that 14 number up there today. We saw it on Earnhardt. We saw it on Skinner. Now Rusty Wallace with, a, with a, maybe the race on the line pulls off a 14 point eight. Looks like he's going to be about eight or ten seconds ahead of Jeff Gordon, so he does stay on the big lap. 22 laps to go here at Sears Point. Lap number 90 is completed. Jeff Gordon leads Ward for Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, and Mark Martin. <clears throat> Big dummy Sterling's in second place. What'd I say? Well, I... Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, to stop here I wonder why he hasn't done it really. I mean, his advantage if he right here. And the cost comes out, he's really hurting. Mm -hmm. This is up towards the front. Yeah, that, that would help if you have it Oh, man, he was having such a good race, too, wasn't he? Yes, he was. <laughs> and Martin. Mark Martin goes to fourth. Mm. Yeah. Burns in, you got it. Thank you. So can Gordon go the rest of the way or can he? Well, they say it's well, close. Close. Yeah, I guess. It would be close, sir, Bob. One thing about one good thing about Ward made a pit stop, so you don't have to look so bad when you get back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 